Hey everybody, Brian here. In this video, I want to show you this vehicle here. This is Hyundai Van. So this is what's called a Staria. It's a really intriguing looking vehicle. Uh, so this is a van that started life as a car. So essentially, the nice thing about these, they were designed as a car initially. So you had obviously occupants up front uh, and then there was a passenger version. I'm not sure, it might be like a seven or eight seater. Never came into Ireland, but What's cool in this is the fact that it was initially designed in a car, so you'll see some unique kind of nice features uh, in terms of comfort. But anyway, if you're looking at this car, uh, or sorry, this vehicle here even then, and you are in Ireland, then you're probably looking for the commercial vehicle, which is this version here. When we saw it first, we actually thought it was a full electric version. I'm not aware of any versions that are due to come in full electric or hybrid. Right now, I'm not saying that they won't, but I'm just not aware of any. So this one is a really, powerful and torquey 2.2 diesel engine and it's really really nice to drive anyway in this video we're going to have a look at the features on the inside of the outside and i'll go run through some of the measurements and statistics well not statistics but just overall uh, numbers you might use so uh, first things let's start from just the outside of the vehicle so a couple of things that i see on the outside i think that are worth mentioning uh in through here so let's look at the taillights they have a kind of led style they are look like halogen bulbs to be fair but they're broken up into these little diodes here so i'd say they're pretty cool looking at night time uh, there's a big staria uh badge and a Hyundai badge along through there okay that's not significant I just think it looks really nice um, but one thing that is significant on the back of this and I've had a few jobs over the years uh, years ago when I was a college and stuff like that where I drove a lot of vans uh, and, I, and actually when I started selling cars a million years ago which was like early zero zeros I sold a lot of vans because I worked in a garage a Renault garage so we sold a lot of Renault traffic and that kind of stuff uh, so I kind of have a closet affection for vans I really like them Anyway, the reason I'm telling you that is a lot of vans, sometimes they have an up and over uh, door. Uh, I believe in some countries, this will have the up and over door option. Uh, but for Ireland, it looks like the barn door option, which opens out and over here then opens out like so. Now, apparently you can get in the back of this vehicle, three Euro sized pallets. Just for anyone asking, if you were in the rear of the vehicle and you wanted to open out the doors, there is a handle on the inside. So that's quite useful. And one thing from my van days a million years ago is a lot of vans, you only ever got one sliding door on the side. Maybe that's changed, um, but this one's got two. And they reckon with Euro pallets, you will be able to side load pallets from uh, here. So that'll be quite useful. What I do remember before was loading pallets. You'd put one there and then you'd use the second one to shove that one forward. And in this case, if it's three, you might use the third one to shove them all forward. So um, one thing I do see here as well, which is quite useful and probably standard on a lot of vans, but I like the fact that there's a window here. There's protection. Uh, I presume that bar, like a strut bar or whatever, is there to protect the window from something going up against it or whatever. Uh, but that is useful for lots of reasons. Obviously, you keep the passenger section separate from the cargo, but also reduces road noise and that contributes to driver fatigue and things like that as well. Right, standing up in the back of this van, I'm six foot. So, you know, like, look, there's bigger vans that you can get that are six foot high, the high roof and all that kind of stuff. This is not one of those. But, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, so it's not. One other thing I see here as well, Anchorage point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight Anchorage points. And then there's also from the factory. So a lot of the times uh, people uh, that buy vans, they'll usually want some sort of interior. Um... Oh, sorry, actually, before I say that, you open up the door like that when you're inside, but if you want, if it's locked in place, which it is there, then you pull that forward like that. And that allows it to do a free reel uh, along the rail, or sorry, along the track, even along there. Anyway, uh, sorry, what I was going to say to you was a lot of people will ply line the vans on the inside, but I see this one actually from the factory seems to have an element of, there's a kind of a half lining already there uh, to protect things, uh, to protect the sides of the van at lower levels. So again, I'm slightly out of touch with the van game, so maybe that's just the way things are these days, uh, but I, that's not something that I remember over the years. And even at the back here as well, there's these sections for covering too. And while we're on that topic, actually, that reminds me in here. So I always remember vans having plastic and then plastic everywhere. But these ones actually have a carpet. So that's a little bit more comfortable. Okay, so we do have windows in the back, which means you have great visibility because you can look out through the back of the bulkhead. Makes the cabin nice and bright, obviously, as well. You can look out through the back windows, which is, uh, I suppose, good for visibility, especially when you're reversing up something. Some people have commented that they'd rather steal. I don't think we have that option right now. So, uh, but for privacy, it's quite easy for us to make those two windows jet black on the rear so nobody can see into the vehicle. 
Okay, so let's talk about some measurements, right? In terms of the actual length of the vehicle, so say the length of the vehicle from the front bumper to the rear bumper, 5,253 millimeters. And the overall height of the vehicle then, so from the bottom all the way to the top, that's 2,000 millimeters. And it's actually kind of like a little square. So when you think about it, I was saying it's 2,000 millimeters high. The width of the vehicle, and these measurements I'm talking about right now are external, not internal. So the width of the vehicle from one side to the other is just shy of 2,000 millimeters at 1,997. So that's what I'm saying, it's almost as high as it is wide, if that makes sense. The wheelbase then, which is 3,273 millimeters, basically from here to here. So why would you use these measurements? Well, if there's other vans that you're considering, uh, and size is going to be important in terms of the exterior, where you're parking it, where you're using it, those measurements will be useful for the outside. But for a lot of uh, people watching then, they want to know about interior sizes. In other words, what can I actually get into the vehicle? So the load space length, 2,607 millimeters from there to there. 1,436 millimeters from here up to here. 1,640 millimeters from there across to there. And then 4,935 liters of storage space. So that's where you're considering the whole area in terms of litres. In terms of the payload in the vehicle, I was under the impression that it was an 800 kg payload, so just under a tonne, but I have some um, measurements that are telling me it's a little over a tonne at 1,072. So just in or around a tonne is my understanding of the payload on it. But I have heard 800, but most of the research I'm doing is telling me it's a little over a thousand. And those figures are in kilograms, kgs. Okay, so closing the rear, this door closes first. And then this door closes second. Like what we're saying then, when I pull back them doors, they do lock in place. Uh, once I'm finished then, pull it and allow it to slide forward. And the doors actually, to be fair, are nice and light and they run along their tracks quite freely. Uh, those wheels, while we're out here, they are a 17 inch steel wheel. Right, a couple of other things I see on the outside. Parking sensors are standard on the front of the vehicle and parking sensors are standard on the rear of the vehicle and we'll see in a sec then there's a reversing camera also. Now remember I was saying this car was you know initially developed as a passenger vehicle it's when you get into the cabin up front that's where you kind of see uh, the effects of that and I mean that in a good way. For a lot of people with commercial vehicles sheets of paper bits and pieces all that kind of stuff builds up in uh, vehicles so down through there you got some storage you got some more storage in through here I could probably put a phone or something like that sitting in that kind of area there another little area might have changed and stuff like that electric through windows and mirrors and the mirrors are electric falling there is a drinks holder in through here like actually by the way i'm just standing up here this is the kind of height everything's at so when i'm standing that's almost at like my chest height if that makes sense so just to give you an idea and actually one thing i really notice on these it's more so actually when you're outside the vehicle rather than inside look how low the window is um but that provides a massive window with really, really great, um, uh, sorry, I forgot how to talk there, visibility. The window's really low. That's cool for uh, the amount of light that's getting into the vehicle, but cool when you're looking outside for the visibility when you're parking and stuff like that. Anyway, for driver comfort, the seat is height adjustable. That is for straightening up the back part of the seat. The steering wheel is rake reach, so you can go up or down, or you can go in or out. It's a little bit stiff because it's the first time it's been done. Wow, that is actually a two-handed job, believe it or not. It's really easy to do with two hands, hard to do with one hand, so you kind of need to balance it. We'll take my word for it, it works. Okay, over here I have light controls, uh, sorry, win uh, window controls even, and then it tells me up there what position they're in. So you see in the center, it's telling me where the wipers are. Over through here then, I've got the lighting controls, and again, as I switch them, it's telling me where they are. Now, what's cool in this, auto headlights, so they come on at night, auto dip which means if I push that forward I get this little symbol in here and then the lights will actually dip at night time when it meets traffic and it'll go into a uh, full light um, when you go into a country area over here you have things like lane oh, sorry uh, cruise control uh, along through there so set your cruise control exact same stuff you see on the expensive passenger cars we have lane departure warning so it's going to warn you if you drift out of your lane and try and keep you within that lane uh, unless you have it turned off uh, over through here then controls for voice activated bluetooth and radio controls in through here a really nice uh, gearbox where it is uh, i mean maybe all vans are gone like that but 
it's nice where it is. You'll see when we're driving the car, it's easy to use. Driving the car, driving the van, I mean. Uh, down here, more storage. In here, more storage. Two USB points. Uh, more storage. Wireless charging. Uh, I can have the camera on. Even if I'm not in reverse, when I'm driving forward, I can have the camera on. But like we sent to you, you can look out the back. You can look out the back. You can even leave that on while you're driving forward. And we can look along through here as well. So uh, a lot of the times I remember driving vans over the years and kind of once you're in the cabin, you're in the cabin and then there's nothing going on behind you. There was no car cameras, there was no sense, there's no nothing. Wow, this is really, really good. Uh, again, more space. So this looks like it drops down, but it doesn't. Um, but storage again for documents over through here and then average speed and fuel efficiency and which tire is low on pressure and all that kind of stuff can be displayed up through the center. And then you have a revolution counter and a speedo either side. In through here then, uh, air conditioning, but it's climate control. Wow, vans get so much these days. I started off like in a transit, it was like a 94. It was really noisy, there was no turbo, it was really slow. Uh, I loved it. Um, God, I missed vans. You're so high up, there's such a nice driving position. You'll see when we drive the car anyway. Drive the van even. Um, so, speed up and slow down, warm or cold, front and rear windscreen demisters, air conditioning. Um, this is the same radio unit, the Asian screen you get in uh, a lot of Hyundai's. Oh, this is a bit different. So rather than a button, it's kind of a recessed button, so it doesn't click, it just kind of touches it, uh, per se. So in through there, you will have Apple CarPlay, you'll have Android Auto, um, so they will give you Google Maps and Spotify and all that kind of stuff, or the regular radio and Bluetooth controls you'd expect. Uh, the passenger side, which sometimes gets forgotten on a lot of vehicles, um, in vans, so plenty of people get into vehicles all over Ireland or all over the world I'm sure every day and they have passengers look how much legroom I have in front of me it is awesome so we have like I'm not running down a Mercedes Vito like there's plenty of vans out there we just have a Mercedes Vito here for like seven years and I've used it where I've had two people in the front and they it is sardine central there is no space at all for the passengers and they're really upright and uncomfortable and they can't put their legs out and they hate traveling i actually wouldn't mind i would love to drive a van more often out of work but um it's not comfortable for the passengers so in this i cannot emphasize how much leg room is here in front of me in through there um glove box a little bit narrow but does the job but again again you have lots of storage in the doors like what you saw on the other areas of the vehicle um now this is the tricky part for a lot of people. It is the, oh wow. Okay, this moves. Right, you can let the seat backwards and forward. You can let the front seat backwards and forward. Why would that be a good idea? For this reason, you can recline the seat. Wow, okay. My partner, she, like I said, she hits into the front of a van because her back is always sore afterwards because she's sitting dead upright in that veto. She would be comfortable in this, really comfortable. This is cool. And then the middle seat, okay, if I have the seat forward, right, do I have a lot of room here? No, that's where the seat is reclined, but you know, okay, I don't have a lot of leg room here. However, if I drop that, oops. So if I unrecline the seat, so I can move that back. Now sitting in here, I can put this foot over here where I got a bit of space there. And now I have a decent amount of leg room and an adult could sit here and be comfortable. But one other thing I see, I think is, yeah. You got an armrest. You got an armrest. If, like, say it's two people, two people would be seriously comfortable in the front of this vehicle. And this is what I'm saying to you, where it's uh, originally designed as a passenger vehicle. This is the stuff that actually uh, probably has transferred over from the original design as a passenger vehicle. So, storage, drinks, more storage, more storage, and all you're doing is literally pulling that up and down to put it back into place. That front cab is super impressive. That is a nice, nice van. Uh, I haven't driven too many other vans in a couple of years, so I suppose it's hard for me to compare. But just from what I see here, that's got to be uh, a seriously comfortable van for the passenger and the driver. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, let's go for a drive. When you're driving the van, obviously you have this lovely panoramic view that's in front of you. The gearbox is really nice to use, really precise, feels like the gears... It just gives you a nice feedback, basically. Uh, and the engine, like the engine is 177 brake horsepower. There's a lot of power. One thing I would say on a back road like this, it's probably going to be a car that, or sorry, a van that probably is going to drive a little bit better when there's a little bit of weight. But I think you'd say that about pretty much any van when there's weight over the back wheels or a little bit more um, sure-footed. But the power is really good. This will actually tow 
up to 2.5 tonnes brake towed so there's a really good capability and I would imagine even if you had this fully loaded there's still going to be a lot of torque there's actually 430 newton meters of torque in it it's really really nice in my opinion that has got to be one of the better levels of performance out there because I always remember vans being 120 130 horsepower uh, this one at 177 it's really good the windows there's so much visibility out of these windows so it drives really well there's really kind of panoramic sort of view from the vehicle geez I really actually wish we don't have one of these registered yet I would love you registered one of these uh, to keep it on as demo we probably will soon but haven't done it yet the black line across the front is a bit Robocop so it's kind of cool looking it's a bit mad uh, there is daytime running lights that will be down there and then you have halogen headlights up front and the indicators are recessed in behind the grill uh, so you can't really see them until they're turned on and then even the turn signals up here there's nice little leds built into the wing mirrors uh, where's the indicator on the rear yeah, standard straightforward indicator on the rear anyway it's a nice van uh, so if there's information you want like you're saying to you or maybe i didn't already we are fitzpatrick's garage a family-run business in operation for almost 70 years we can trade in your car we can finance so if you would like to know give us a shout uh, brian's my name Hopefully you like this vehicle and hopefully the videos have been useful. If I've missed anything, let me know. Thanks for watching.